our first um, guest artist concert since 2019. Oh my goodness. And as you can tell, <laughs> as you can tell, the uh, pandemic is not quite over, but we are going for it anyway because live music is incredibly important. Um, hello out there in live stream land. We see you. Hopefully you see us. Um, so, we are very excited to welcome Jamie Baum and her Septet Plus, so I'll leave it to you to count them. Um, Jamie Baum is a flutist composer based in New York. She has toured the U.S. and over 35 countries, playing festivals and concert halls, and has worked with myriad of artists from a variety of genres. She's very versatile. Uh, among her many accolades, in 2014, Jamie won a Guggenheim Fellowship, which helped to fund her latest CD, Bridges. She has toured on behalf of the U.S. State Department as a Kennedy Center Jazz Ambassador, and continues to tour consistently with this and other projects. She works on many projects, uh, but all the while, Septet Plus has been her muse for over 20 years. Jamie is on the faculty of the Manhattan School of Music and is a clinician of Altus Flutes. Um, tomorrow we do have a workshop which um, is improvisation for the classical or any musician. And that will be taking place right here uh, in person for those who are participating, but you can also watch it on Zoom. So if you're on my um, email list, the Wellesley Concert, Wellesley, excuse me, yeah. Wellesley College Concert Series email list, then you can get the Zoom link. So if you want to get on my email list, you can text concerts to 42828. Pretty sure that's right. 42828. Um, and after that is a midday news, a Sunday news in this case, and that will be all of mine, and that will be a different uh, Zoom link. So um, if you want those, you can just look me up and, and find me on Define at Wellesley. Okay, and um, we are really happy to have you all here and make some noise for Jamie Baum. And I'll just ruin things while I'm here. Um, Jamie Baum and Septet Plus. Shut down, and 
sort of saw everything fall apart like dominoes. And so, you know, sitting in a small apartment in midtown Manhattan with, uh, you know, not knowing what was going to happen, I started writing some new music and um, got kind of inspired by, I was trying to figure out actually what to do for my next project. And I started uh, seeing, reading some poems online uh, that, on a website that was put up by Bill Moyers. I don't know if some of you are familiar with him, but he was a news commentator. And, um, he did a beautiful thing. He put up this website, and um, I forget what he said, but it was something like, you know, poems to inspire that are about COVID and what we're going through. So I started flipping through the different poems, and the, the thing that was great about it was that he would um, every day present a new poet, and you could read the poem, or you could watch a video that was posted of the poet reading the poem themselves. And I was never one who was super big on poetry until a few years before that when I actually heard somebody read their own poem. And I think that makes a huge difference because you kind of get the essence or you get an idea of what they're saying. And so I saw a few, and in particular, the first one that really caught me was um, Adrienne Rich. And Bill Morris was interviewing her about her poems. And one of the poems was called What Kinds of Times Are These? And um, she said that she got the poem from reading a Bertolt Brecht poem where he says, what kinds of times are these when it's, I think, dangerous or scary to talk about trees because of all the evil deeds. And it just seems so, you know, the thing about really great art is that it's kind of timeless. You know, you write it or they write it and they talk about it and it seems like it's happening then and then it just seems so current. Um, so I got very inspired by that and I decided that, you know, one thing I really hadn't done was write music using lyrics and poetry for vocalists. And so I decided to start down that path. And um, we're going to be doing some of that new music and then toward the end we'll do some music from our last CD and I'll talk about that. So the first piece you're going to hear is called In the Light of Day. And this is really kind of about, you know, our crazy daily life in New York City or really anywhere. Um, I thought a lot about Nepal when I was there a couple of times where you'd have these traffic circles, you know, and just nobody pays attention to anything and it's just totally madness. And just how, you know, we tend to go about our daily lives without thinking and in the split second things can change. So we'll go from that to um, a poem by March Pearson called To Be of Use, which is about the value of work. And uh, I think you have the program, so um, after that I think is uh, an old story about A. Tracy K. Smith and um, dreams and then what kinds of times are these. So anyway.
people I love the best jump into work head first without bowing in the shallows and swim off with sure strokes almost out of sight. They seem to become natives of that element, the black sleek heads of seals bouncing like half-submerged balls. I love people who harness themselves, an ox to a heavy cart, who pull like water buffaloes with massive patience, who strain in the mud of the muck to move things forward, who do what has to be done again and again. I want to be with people who submerge in the task, who go into the fields to harvest and work in a row and pass the bags along, who are not parlor generals and field deserters, but move in a common rhythm when the food must come in or the fire be put out. The work of the world is common as mud. Botched, it smears the hands, crumbles to dust. But the thing worth doing well has a shape that satisfies, clean and evident. Green bamboo forests for wine or oil, Hopi vases that held corn, are put in museums, but you know they were made to be used. The pitcher cries for water to carry and a person for work that is real.
little would survive us. How little we had been rebuilt that was not now lost. Something large and old awoke. And then our city brought on a different manner of weather. Then animals, long believed gone, crept down the trees. We took the stock of one another. We wept to be reminded of such color.
We'd like to invite our guest vocalist, Becca Shrimpton. And um, just so you know, we, uh, with all the craziness of COVID, you know, we had to test in the morning before we came, and then we test when we got here, and we all were trying really hard to make sure nothing happened. And, and then last night at about midnight, I got a call from my French horn player, and he said, the good news is I tested positive, but the bad news is I have a really bad stomach bug, and I don't think I can do the gig. So I was like, oh, okay. And then he said, I'll call you in the morning. So he called me at about 7, and he said, no way. So um, luckily, you know, I was torn. Should we do it without the French horn, or should we try to kind of see what we can do and improvise as the improvisers we are? Rebecca, I called Rebecca or texted her, and she's like, oh, here's some names, I know some people, and we were very lucky to get Kirk Dirk, I'm sorry, that we just met a couple of hours ago, and he's doing such a fantastic job, so. <laughs> and in fact, Rebecca just came and miraculously played through the pieces with us once, and, and did such an incredible job, so. Looking forward to this. And, um, you know, I've had the band for about 20 years and, you know, going in a lot of different directions with writing um, from classical influences to South Asian influences. And um, I sat down to start working on music to incorporate using lyrics and voice and um, was truly, truly humbled to realize it was a whole other skill set to, to make it something that would be singable, um, especially since throwing all these wacky things to these amazing musicians and being lucky enough to get them to play it and more. Um, which brings me to the point, since we've stopped, I'd like to introduce these fantastic musicians. We have Luis Perdomo on piano. Dirk, the wonderful French horn player, so, and Brad Shepard on guitar, Jeff Hirschfield on drums, and Kiki Rodriguez on bass, so I think bass, and So um, these next two pieces I mentioned earlier um, were by Adrian Rich, and the first one is um, called What Kinds of Times Are These? And as I mentioned, it's based on this Bertolt Brecht poem that we're, I have it in front of me now, where he said, what kinds of times are these? When it's almost a crime to talk about trees because it means keeping silent about so many evil deeds. And he wrote that during the Nazi period. And so, like I said, you know, everything that's going on now seems quite fitting. And um, then we're going to go into another piece of hers, which is called In Those Years, which she said, um, you know, suggesting how we lost sight of we, you know, of, as a collective society, looking out for each other, only sort of focusing on the eye.
just okay. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming, staying with us, and joining us from out there in, in uh, stream land. Um, once again, uh, Luis Perdomo on camera. Ricky Rodriguez on the bass. Jeff Richard on drums. Brad Chepik on guitar. Rick Murphy on the French horn. Sam Sadabursky on alto sax. And this is on the Jonathan Finlayson on trumpet. And my name is Jamie Bell. And thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's good to see you. And uh, hopefully there will be more live concerts soon and we'll all get through this. So thanks so much. Thank you from us, from Wellesley College, to the Septet Plus. Thank you so much. Cersei Miller, Paula Zeitlin, uh, who have been working so hard towards all of this. And music department, our shares, um, Claire Fontaine and David Russell and our audio engineer Kuko Davido and all my wonderful students that are helping. So thank you everyone for coming and we'll see you soon.